Okay, um, I'd like to give a quick demo of the different preferences that come with Liberty Basics Editor. So here we have it started up, so I'm just going to open it here by clicking on the preferences icon in the toolbar. And you'll notice that they're broken down into categories of notification, starting up, compiling, environment. We'll just go through them one at a time. So the first is confirm on exit of Liberty Basic right here. And all this does is when you uh, decide you want to leave Liberty Basic, it simply asks you if you're sure you want to leave. So this is currently turned on. Um, then we have another pop-up here, display execution complete notice. And what this does is when you're running your program in the Liberty Basic environment, uh, a pop-up will appear when it's done executing. And this can be useful uh, because sometimes, while, especially while you're developing, you may not actually realize that you've come to the end of the program because you haven't finished writing the code. So when this happens, this pop-up will show up and then you'll know oh, I ran, ran into the end of the program. Uh, the next one is start Liberty Basic Editor full screen. And so this, what this does is when you start Liberty Basic up, if this is set, then the editor will fill the entire screen. Um, next, we have load on startup. And so what this does is if you pick the first item, then Liberty Basic Editor will start with nothing in it, which is blank. And the second item is um, the most recent file. So whatever the last thing that you were working on when you closed Liberty Basic down before, it will open with the same file in it. And then finally we have this file, and then we have the name of the file here. So in this case, it's welcome.bas, which is this file here that you see in the editor but you can set it to whatever you would prefer, whether that would be uh, maybe a file that you filled with um, your favorite subroutines uh, that you would use for the beginning of basis of a project or whatever it is you'd like. Okay, so now over here, we come to the compiling section and it's uh, first one is show compile progress dialog. Now, when you're running very small programs and if that's all you ever write and you don't want to be bothered, you could turn this off because you it will compile so fast that that it will be pointless for it to show you but if you are writing very large programs then you might want to watch it compile uh, so it will pop up a little window with a little progress bar in it and it will tell you uh, you know exactly how many lines it's compiled as it goes the next is com enable compiler reporting and what this does is uh, Let's say your, your program accidentally has similar variable names in it. Like for example, you've got a variable name like um, line, and then another place you've got lines, and maybe you want it to be informed that you have variable names that are very similar so that you won't run into the problem of um, pulling your hair out because you've got the variable named differently in, in two different places and then you get a weird bug. The other thing that it does is it tells you uh, when you have two variable names where the the upper and lower case is um, different but they're spelled the same. Uh, the next one is uh, create dot back file on run and debug and then below it is a, a path where you would like to store these. So if this is turned on then what will happen is whenever you run or debug your program it will save an additional copy of that uh, into another folder that you would specify here and uh, would give it the name dot BAK. Okay, so that basically allows you to have a, a separate copy. You could, for example, you could um, you could have a, a USB drive on your computer and you could save it all of your programs to that USB drive and then if your hard drive dies on you then you've got a backup copy. Um, next in the environment section you have use syntax coloring. So if this is on then the source code over here will be colored whereas instead if it's if this is not checked then it will always be black text. So the next item is enable auto indenting and so what this does is uh, it, while you're typing um, each next line will indent the same as the previous line and uh, so this can save you some keystrokes, makes it a little bit uh, quicker to write code that's structured. Uh, the next item here is add 
kill basic apps to all windows and basically what that does is that there's usually only one place to have a kill basic apps menu item and that's on the editor and that's here under the run menu but if you turn this on then uh, on all of the windows that open running your program it will add this feature so that you can basically terminate any program that you want running um, if it runs out of control or something like that and the next line we have here the basically this sets the size of the main window so there's a default text window that opens with every basic program unless you're using no main wind to suppress it. And this allows you to set the width and height of that window. So you can basically uh, perf uh, specify how much text you want to be able to see all at once. Now down here we have the source file name extension, which is by default BAS, which is uh, what people have been using for an extension for basic programs for a very long time in many places that's standard but but if you have another version of basic installed that uses .bas on the end of your file names and you want to be different in liberty basic then you can change it to lba or um, lb or whatever you want then the next item is reload file on activate now if this is turned on then what happens is um, let's say you're using an external editor, you have a favorite editor um, that you would like to use instead of the one that comes with Liberty Basic. If you turn this on, then um, you can use that editor to edit your file. And then when you come back to the Liberty Basic editor here and bring it to the foreground, uh, if that's the file that's open, it will automatically refresh it and you can just run it immediately. And I have another video about how to, to take advantage of that feature. I'll include a link to that in the comments below. Um, then we have the always open main window on debug. If this is turned on, then what will happen is that if you run the debugger and your program has specified that no main window should show up, if this is turned on, then the main window will always open, even if the code in your program suppresses it. And so that allows you to log um, information to that window uh, say it's debug debugging code and whenever you're running in the debugger you want to use that debugging code that logs to that to the main window this allows you to do that finally we have filter bad characters and this feature if it's turned on removes uh, certain characters that the Liberty Basic compiler doesn't like and the reason that you need this is it, if you're copying and pasting code in from the internet on a web browser, sometimes the that code can contain characters that would not be considered legal for the compiler. And so if you turn this on, then it removes all of those characters. Some of those you might be able to see that probably appears a little black um, marks in the program, or sometimes they'd be invisible and you wouldn't see them at all. But just if you turn this on, then you, it will filter those out and you'll be able to run the code. So. I uh, hope you found this tour of the preferences useful. Um, until next time, have fun with Liberty Basic.